Futurell, Director of Education here at Redline Contemporary Arts Center. And I'm Emma Atchison, Education Manager at Redline. Located in Denver, Colorado, Redline Contemporary Arts Center fosters education and engagement between artists and communities to create positive social change. Founded in 2008, Redline was created to support emerging artists and provide creative opportunities for local residents. Redline serves as an incubator for a thriving group of artists through an in-depth two-year program that includes free studio space, community engagement opportunities, and professional development. The organization also offers a range of programming that responds to the issue of very Viewing arts and arts education through a lens of social issues, the organization ensures equitable access to the arts for under-resourced populations by working to fulfill a vision of empowering everyone to create social change through art. Great. We now present empowerment. 
featuring the work of both Epic Arts and Art Corps mentoring artists. This collaborative exhibition celebrates student work through the pandemic and movements towards social justice. The past year has been anything but ordinary. We have learned to live in isolation and deny ourselves the things that make us who we are. Connection is at the very heart of humanity and without it, we feel powerless. This time has also created a new sense of community and a renewed promise for what is possible. We will be heard and we will not be silenced we have rec reclaimed our empowerment. Oh, thank you, Emma. The youth artists of Art Corps Mentoring and Epic Arts present this bold statement together as a bridge between what we've lost and what we stand to gain together. We hope that you find your empowerment through these brave artists and are inspired by their unwavering commitment to building a brighter future. We would like to thank the following major sponsors for their philanthropic support of our educational programs. The Addy Foundation, Colorado Health Foundation, Harvey Family Foundation, Hamera Foundation, Keeley Moley Family Foundation, and Margol Foundation. We would also like to express our gratitude to Redline's leading annual fund contributors. The Bonfi Stanton Foundation, Deva and Laura Mirage Foundation, the Den Denver Foundation, and the Scientific and Cultural Facilities District. Special thanks to the Morris and Joyce Price Art Bank and Guyrie's Color Choice for creating an ongoing platform for youth and teachers to access free art supplies for Redline's youth education programs. Well, as you guys can tell, we're live here at Redline, and it's kind of bustling here. We've got a lot of our students, a lot of our mentors, our mentees, our artists, our collaborating artists here today, and we would love to share our exhibition with you. Um, we are keeping a mask mandate um, throughout this time, so that if you come and visit us, we ask that you keep your masks on and you keep socially distant, but we are inviting you to come and visit us all the way through June 26th when this show comes down. Emma, are you ready to share uh, the exhibition I as it am. stands right now? Yeah, so we're gonna kick it off with our Art Corps Mentoring exhibition. First off, I'd like to thank our amazing mentors and students for their dedication and perseverance this year. This year has been anything but easy, so thank you. Our art car mentoring program takes place at Whittier and Bruce Randolph schools with students in grades fifth through eighth. We pair professional artists to work one-on-one -on -one with students throughout the entire school year. The program raises student voice and gives them agency to address social issues through art. So we're gonna hop in here and highlight some of our youth projects. So first off, we have Zariah Clark's project. Zariah is a student at Bruce Randolph School, and her mentor this year was Edgar L. Page. So I'll read you a portion of their artist statement. This piece is about mental health. Flowers are seen as colorful things no matter what they represent. In my art, they represent growth and beauty. I created this for my cousin. They are a very important person in my life. I also created it for myself. I was in a dark place, but I'm starting to grow as a person and get better, and I want that for other people too. So you can see in Zariah's work that you can actually open it up and check out the inside. And she represented her own growth and empowerment through this inside that's very colorful with the flowers, and she also represented that and showed it through this box down here that you can take a closer look at when you come see the show in person. So the next project I wanna talk about is one by a student at Whittier School, Tiana McAdory. Tiana has been in the program for the last two years with her mentor, Darkita Gold. So Tiana wanted to tell everyone a little bit about the piece. I created this piece to spread the word about how we feel to take how we need to take better care of Mother Earth, but also to show that we need to be more accepting of each other, no matter the gender, race, sex, or even sexuality, and to know that we are all connected in some type of way. I used acrylic paint on the mannequin to represent all types of skin tones and the LGBTQIA colors. When creating this project, Narkita and I used various materials to make the flowers, leaves, and birds. The point I wanted to communicate was with all of these things is that no one is ever going to be the same as the last person before them. This is shown in the flowers. Some are pointy and others are curved. I also show this with the birds. Some are small and others are big. Lastly, with the leaves, they are all different. 
These are all connected to Mother Earth, just like humanity. I want to show that just because someone is different, that doesn't mean we should show prejudice towards them. They should be able to love themselves and be who they are, no matter what society thinks. projects are interactive so if you're able to come in person to see the exhibition make sure to check out each of the elements and what you're able to contribute to so you can see here with Safiro's project you can actually add to this community canvas 
or take a pin, take a zine that they created. So at each project, make sure to read about how you're able to interact with the piece. The next project I'd like to talk about is by a student, Amara Dawson. Amara their school and her mentor is Lindy Zimmer. So for Amara's project, she actually created this dress and hand sewed the whole thing. So I'm gonna read you an excerpt from her artist statement. In this piece, I'm looking to educate people on the waste and pollution caused by the fashion industry. I made this dress out of entirely reused fabric I found at thrift stores in and around Denver. I decided to make a dress to show myself and others the work that goes into making these garments. Spoiler alert, it's very difficult. The fashion industry alone is responsible for 10% of all annual global emissions. Pollution affects the earth, which affects us all. And her mentor actually created this animation behind it that talks a little bit more about the pollution that the fashion industry creates. And then if you do come in person, you can fill out this survey about your um, consumption around fashion and the fashion industry. of our main exhibition hall. So you're gonna follow me this way to see the rest of the show. If you come to see the exhibition in person, you can either grab a physical gallery guide or scan a QR code along the wall so you can read all of the artist statements from our youth and mentor artists.
and food insecurity, and his mentor this past year was Kay Volatich. I'm going to read you a section of his artist statement. I've chosen to address food waste and homelessness with this piece because it's a serious topic and I want to bring people's attention to it. I use clay and sculpture because I find this medium interesting and fun. I enjoy using clay because you can see a three-dimensional physical representation of your imagination. I am most inspired by my father because he works so hard to perfect things that don't always need perfection. You can see his mentor's piece alongside of it deals with the same issues of food insecurity. And so she actually created this interactive piece where you can take food as needed. And we have bins at the front of the space where if you're able, you can donate non-perishable items that will be donated to a food bank at the end of the exhibition. at Whittier School, Josiah Cross. This was Josiah's first year in the program and he worked with Mike Roderick on a, program, or on a piece about homelessness. In his artist statement, he said, there's a homeless encampment near my house and it recently got swept. My mom went over and a lot of people were sad because their stuff was being thrown away. I know this wouldn't normally happen to someone with a house, but the police were doing it to these people. Our society treats people experiencing homelessness, homelessness like they are not human and we should do more to help. So in his piece, he actually created the separation between those that have resources and those that don't. And he put these really interesting facts about the sweeps that are going on right now in Denver, including the one that just happened outside of his home that inspired this project. And his mentor, Mike, created this portrait of Josiah to go alongside it. By an artist who's been in our program for three years, Kalijah Williams, and his mentor is Casey Kawaguchi. He created this piece about endangered animals, and so you see in the center is a snow leopard, and he actually created stickers and a word search that go alongside it. And his mentor, Casey, also painted a snow leopard to complement Kalijah's piece. Thank you so much for allowing me to share some of the work by our artists, mentors, and mentees from our Art for Mentoring program. And now I'm going to hand it off to JC Futrell to talk about our Epic Arts exhibition. If you're interested in becoming an artist mentor, you can do, do so by following the link that's about to pop up on your screen. Thanks, Emma. Um, thank you. I want to uh, present you with these flowers. Uh, thank you. And thank you for your dedication, your hard work, all of your passion for our kids, not just this year, but beyond. You have supported our community when all of those things kind of fell out beneath the bottom, and it has meant the world. Um, and I take a look at you know young men like Kalijah right there, you know, and just know that with people like you, our community here. Um, we'll be able to, to make it. Thank you, JC. So thank you. Yeah. Same to you. Thank you. I thank super you. appreciate you. <laughs> <laughs> Same to you. All right. Thank yeah, you. round of applause for Emma. <laughs> Emma Atchison, thank you so much. JC. Thank you. Thank you. All right, guys. Hi. Uh, yeah, so I'm ready to walk into the Epic Arts exhibition. And right now, we have a lot of energy in the building. Um, so bear with me as we walk around um, and talk to some of the artists and students as they are here in the exhibition, um, ready to share um, their stories. Let me read a, a, little, uh, a little bit off of my text uh, to get some business out of the way, just so that you guys have a real understanding as to what we do here at Redline Contemporary Arts Center. Redline's Epic Arts program provides opportunities for K through 12 students in Denver to explore social issues through contemporary art. Each semester, Redline resident artists and community artists all converge and are matched with students and educators, resulting in a unique art collaboration that are conceptual and student-generated. So remember, the students are the ones that are leading the show here. All of the artists are merely acting as project managers, as the students are really letting their voices 
Be Her. This program, which culminates in an epic youth exhibition every year, amplifies student voices by offering the opportunity for young people to express their unique perspectives and ideas through today's world of art. Let me take you on a little journey here into epic arts. Hey guys, hi. This is our main exhibition space here at Redline Contemporary Art Center, and you can see that for some time we've been kind of empty, and now we're bustling with energy. These are young people, these are community organizers, these are artists, these are teachers, these are former board members and current board members, these are contributors and donors. This is our community. This is why we do what we do, and we are so glad to be able to present this to you today. Let's take a step over here and actually talk to a couple of our partners. Oh, there's Vinny. He's been an our core mentor before. Vinny, you want to yeah, give a shout out to the people on Facebook and Instagram. The program is amazing. The students and the teachers, the artists that help, it out, help out with it are just fantastic. This man right here. It's Vinny, this guy. <laughs> Appreciate you, bro. I'm glad you guys are going to look around. I just walked in myself, so I get to look around myself, but it looks amazing. I'm excited. Wow. Thanks, Vinny. We're yeah. going to come find you. Hey, Wit, uh, don't, I'm not, I don't want Wit to go too far. Uh, no exhibition takes place here at Redline without Wit Sibley. And I want to say um, thank you, first and foremost, for not only um, working with our community, working with our artists, working with our kids, um, to make sure that this building, not only, and even when this building was closed, right? You were still coming in and taking care of it. I think that we forget about those kind of things when we're talking about the pandemic. We just think that because everything was closed, that people weren't working. And this man has been working tirelessly um, without a break. And so I want to give a shout out to my main man, Whit Sibley. Thank you so much uh, for being able to take care of us in this way. Um, do you have, any, do you have anything you want to I say just, well, I've, or I've, sing? I've, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've been a red line for about seven years and I love this place. The energy the, of, of all the resident artists, all the students, this, this, this epic program and the art core mentoring program are just incredible, incredible opportunities for the students, for artists, for Redline. Um, it's, it's, it's a fantastic organization and I'm really happy to be a part of it. Thank you, JC, and thank you for all the organization of all this stuff. But that's all I got. <laughs> oh man, Whit, give me a hug. <laughs> Thanks, Whit. <laughs> All right, we're going to jump right into uh, the rest of our show. I want to bring in another one of our community partners. This is Matthew Stearns uh, of the Apron Artist Project. And Matthew is uh, an exceptional um, community partner, artist, and most importantly, friend. And through this uh, you know, relationship that we've had together, he's done almost every program that we've had here at Redline. We met years ago through the 48 Hours of Socially Engaged Art and Conversation Summit that we host every year. Be sure to be on the lookout for that August 13th and 14th of this year. Our main theme is Afrofuturism. Um, but you've also done our Art Core program and most recently our Epic Arts program. Right. Um, can you talk to us a little bit about this particular project and uh, what Epic Arts means to you? Oh yeah, so Epic Arts is just phenomenal. I mean, I'm just inspired every time I work with the kids and other teachers and see what everyone can create. But this particular piece is a community quilt. Um, it has over 100 contributing artists that have worked on individual squares. And in this time, um, since we couldn't do it on location, we decided to, to do it remotely. We created kits, we distributed them through Redline. Um, they went to schools, and then from there, they all came back uh, with all the artists signing the, their paperwork, and uh, then we put it together. And this is, you know, I don't know, over 200 hours worth of work from our, from our artists and myself, and, you know, it's just incredible. You see a, a wide range of emotion and people's experience in this quilt. So... It's really, you know, if you have a chance to come down and see it, please do. Uh, along with all the other great work that's being done right now here at Redline. So this is amazing. And it's so amazing to see so many people in a space again. It's so exciting. So when you're in, in Five Points and Rhino and Denver, come on in and check us out because this is amazing. Yeah, thank yeah. you, Matthew. Yeah, I, and your energy uh, is infectious here. And I, I can't thank you enough for really triggering um, this project and others. Um, at the beginning of the pandemic, Matthew also uh, was able to corral, I did we get like 300 thank you letters for? No, more like 120. But... Like 120, okay, all right. It's like 120 uh, thank you letters uh, for first responders and essential workers at Anschutz Medical Center. And, and I, I can't thank you enough for that um, because your dedication uh, to us and community 
through these these really trying times is really really special. So thank you, wow. sir. Thank you. We're gonna come it's talk to you honor. a little bit it's, later it's, too. It's my honor <laughs> to work with you guys. <laughs> thank you, Matthew. Yeah. All right. Um, I want to take a second to kind of shout out all of our contributing partners as we don't have all of them here. Um, and then I have a very special partner that's right here that's gonna talk to us about one of the very first pieces of the exhibition as we come in. So I want to give a quick shout out to Kristen DeChico and Michael Algebori of AUL, Jasmine Winter, Chelsea Romanello, and Amy Banker with collaborating artist Juan Fuentes at Art Street, the DPS cohort. Katrina Hedrick with collaborating art artist Michael Acuna, a.k.a. Ill7 at Bruce Randolph High School. Vanessa Hayes Quintana and collaborating artist Tycho Chandler. I'd also like to give a shout out to Joliet Learning Center. You guys will see a whole bunch of their artwork over here. Abby Harkey with collaborating artist Karma Lee. Rachel Mullen with collaborating artist Laura Ann Samuelson. Christy Burke with collaborating artist Cherish Marquez and... Sarah Paul Mary, Joshua Burke with collaborating artist Ben Coleman and Juanine Young. I want to give a shout out to Kuntz Miller Creative Arts Academy as they have contributed so much to this particular exhibition. Emily Claypool with collaborating artist Matthew Stearns that you just heard from at McMean Elementary School and Brandon Sweeney with collaborating artist Thomas Detour Evans at Maracek Middle School. And with that, I'd love to introduce to you um, one of our current resident artist here at Redline Contemporary Arts Center and Epic Arts collaborating artist, Sarah Palmieri. Thank you so much Thank for being here today. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to be here. This is my first year teaching an Epic course and I will be doing this again and again. It was such an amazing experience. These young artists just like really inspire me and my practice too. So it was just such an amazing experience. Wow, that's that's exceptional. Can you um, kind of walk us through the exhibition here and tell us a little bit about your artist practice and how that translated into the classroom? Totally, totally. So, um, so my practice is really uh, in abstract painting, and we can kind of come. Is that better? Can you hear me now? Oh. oh, just hold on one sec. We got a little technical difficulty here. How's I think we're back. We're back. Sound? We're good. Sweet. Let's awesome. Go. <laughs> okay. Thanks so much. So my practice is really rooted in abstract painting um, uh, and really intuitive, spontaneous painting. And I really incorporate a lot of meditation into my practice. And so what I did with the students, um, Ms. Burke's 11th grade class at Coons Miller was we did some guided meditations and um, guided meditative painting exercises. Um, and so what you're seeing here is some uh, uh, was one of the last days that we did this practice together here in the space whenever they installed this work. So these are really just about like getting your emotions out and being true to whatever you just needed to deal with in that moment. Um, and we've been doing this since March. And so, um, so we actually worked on a piece together as well. And you can see that over here in the corner. As we come uh, over here, this was actually worked on over a three-week period. Um, so this is about 20 feet or so. Um, but this was a group meditation that we did, which if you come to the exhibit, you can see a video of that process. Um, but this was a group meditation, and it was about taking up space. And it was about allowing your space for your emotions and also how we can interact with each other in that way. So And just come together again and, and be together again. So. Um, they really, I think the students, you know, ended up making individual work, but also we did this group work, and um, I think they really felt like their voices were heard in this experience, and so it was just a great experience for me and a great experience for them, I think. Sarah, that's absolutely incredible. Can you tell me a little bit about um, the importance of social-emotional learning and mental health, totally. um, especially working with this group of young people? Yeah, yeah, I think the importance of it, I think the importance of mental health with our youth has has always needed some more attention but with the pandemic and with this civil rights revolution that we are living in that's become really apparent and so um, you know kind of what we've talked about the importance of doing this work is not just taking care of yourself but you know in doing this anti-racism work and this personal work that we all need to be doing you have to be able to self-reflect and give space for yourself and so so it really comes back to you know doing that work but taking care of yourself and that's how you can take care of your community too so wow i, I appreciate that thank you so yeah. much sarah uh thank you for everything that you've done including bringing young people back into the space again and really focusing on their mental health yeah. and guiding them through a a peaceful way to be able to find balance again which yeah. i think is 
so important and so overlooked. So yeah. thank you so much for all of your support. Thank you so much. I This has been an incredible experience, so thank you. All right, we're going to come calling for you again. Cool. Sounds good. <laughs> Sounds good. All right. Thanks, hey, thank you. One more round of applause for Sarah Paul Mary. Thank you so thank much. You. All right, guys. Uh, are you guys ready to see some of the uh, the rest of the exhibition? Let's take a look. As we come around uh, here, we'll take a look at one of our other pieces of the exhibition with one of our other partners, which is AL AUL. Carlo Gonzalez worked with Kristen DeChico to create a community sketchbook. And I'm gonna read right from their artist statement here so you can understand what was done. Based on the viral prose and the People Stayed Home by Kitty Omer, AUL Denver staff, students, family and friends, even pets, worked independently in a sketchbook depicting life in quarantine. Each participant passed around a single sketchbook and came up with an original piece of art that gives us a glimpse into each singular life in isolation. This small collective of art is a gateway to hope, to sanity, humor, togetherness, and the belief that we are better together even when we're forced apart and that healing can come in many forms. AUL was completely remote during the pandemic. This journal represents the only physical contact that that community had during the entire pandemic. It's a, it's a living book. It's a living testament to connection, to staying together, to what it can be if we refuse to allow ourselves to be disconnected. I think I painted something like that myself during quarantine. <laughs> I'd like to read a, a piece of the quote here that was painted on the wall. And the people stayed home and read books and listened and rested and made art and played and learned new ways of being. They made new choices and dreamed of new visions and created new ways of life and healed the earth as they healed themselves. That's what we're doing right now. We are healing ourselves by coming back into community through art. And I'd love to introduce another one of our community partners and community teachers as well. Look, look at Rachel. Both of you guys scoot in together. Um, this is another one of our amazing collaborations um, that we had uh, this year um, at Kuntz Miller Creative Arts Academy. Um, I'd like to introduce you to one of our resident artists here at Redline Contemporary Art Center. This is Laura Ann Samuelson and her community artist teacher extraordinaire because you are an artist you got some artwork up in here so i'm throwing you in there see we don't give enough credit to our teachers for being artists too rachel moen um i'd like for both of you guys to take an opportunity um to kind of talk about this exhibition and what it was like through the pandemic working with such young people uh during such such a hard time sure yeah so so i was super excited to collaborate with mrs moen rachel moen and her third grade class at coons miller and basically the project that the students were interested in doing was finding ways of processing the loss they were experiencing because of the pandemic. And so if you want to talk a little bit about what is here. Yeah, so um, uh, each kid kind of picked what they missed like the most um, from um, being in quarantine and from um, the pandemic. And so like, like this piece is um, about going places, and so it's the beach um, and the pool. And then they also added pieces like um, hands to represent like touching and friendship. Um, and th there's letters on them too to like people that they miss that they're disconnected from. Um, and um, restaurants and eating together was one of the themes. Um, this one's really sweet because it's actually a fire and it's yeah. a student that misses their mom and they used to go camping with their mom and they haven't been able to see them throughout the pandemic. Um, so they're 
they're pretty emotional pieces. Um, and then I think what's really special about them is these are all my old toys from when I was a kid. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. yeah. And so um, one of the things we talked about was like just missing a part of their childhood. Yeah. And um, so it was really neat to be able to take a part of my own childhood and mm. like give it to them to be able to create with. And, oh, that's um, beautiful. And then um, I think the most pot, you should introduce this. Well, yeah, and so so what's happening here is we have the students did a public service announcement about wanting folks to get the vaccine and the safety and the and knowing wanting folks to know that it's a safe thing to do, and so they made a COVID nineteen versus the vaccine dance battle, um, basically kind of working with the metaphor that the vaccine teaches the human body how to fight against COVID nineteen. And so as you can see, you've got, you know, we have one student who's acting as COVID-19. The rest of the students are acting as the human body. And without the support of the vaccine, she's kind of winning. They're, they're going down, as you'll see. And then the vaccine shows up. And when the vaccine shows up, it teaches the human body how to fight off the virus. So that's the idea there. Lauren, that's so cool, and I know it's a little noisy in here, but I do believe that we have this video on deck uh, for you guys to actually take a look at because it's beyond adorable. Cool. Uh, so I think we're going to cut away right now so you can uh, witness for yourself the vaccination dance. The vaccination dance yeah. battle. Yeah. Vaccination yeah. dance battle, ladies and gentlemen. Cool. <laughs> we built altars to help us understand the loss we experienced due to the pandemic. This is lost included social gatherings, theater, dance, organized sports, family gatherings, smiles in person, classes, actual substitutes, teachers, being close to others, high fives, gram grandmas and grandpas, sleepovers, playdates, and friends. We, we want, want all, all those things, things back. back. They're yes. essential, essential parts of, of being, being a, a kid. kid. While some of these things have come back into our lives, it hasn't been without worry of our own safety. But now there is a vaccine. But people don't want to take the vaccine. Maybe they will after understanding vaccines. Our dance is a metaphor for a, the vaccine. Our body just needs to know how to fight against COVID-19, just like people in a dance battle have to learn their opponent's moves. We are asking anyone who is eligible to get a vaccine to schedule an appointment of consult with their doctor about getting a vaccine. Our social, physical, and emotional development depends on everyone getting a vaccine. Thank, Thank you. you.
Wasn't that the most adorable dance battle you ever saw in your life? You go away, COVID-19. You just lost that dance battle. All right, I'm here um, back with McMean Elementary School and an amazing teacher, an amazing young person, and an amazing artist. Um, Ella, how does it feel to have worked on this Epic Arts project, and what did Epic Arts mean to you? Um, so it was really cool. It gave me a sense of connection um, with, like, being able to like interact with the people online because our class was kind of split up um, with like most of our class was online and there were like eight of us in person. So we got to do collaborative art together. Um, it also was really like, Epic Arts is really cool for me because it's a way to collaborate with someone who, um, with people who like, have made more art and are more experienced um but you get it's more your ideas put into it like they can help agree with um stuff and like give ideas but it, in the end it's really up to the students and um like a, like many times there's we like what came together as like groups and then we honestly just kind of talked about it and then we the teachers kind of just stepped back a little bit um, so it was really cool because it gave us a sense of freedom and um, connection with that. That sounds really empowering. As a young artist, do you feel like uh, you gained something uh, from this that you didn't have before? Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, it gave me a sense of confidence and like more connection. I think that's one of the main things that Epic Arts was all about this year. Um, and it like helped, I think it also helped other people in my group gain confidence. And, uh, and um, it helped me grow my art skills, like being able, like painting better. Like um, I learned a new skill with paint markers. Oh, wow. um, and I n learned a new skill with oil pastels. So there um, were def def definitely um, art skills that came out of it, but there were also emotional and uh, like emotional and mental skills. Oh wow, that's that's incredible. Thank you so much. Um, as her teacher, uh, Emily, uh, and this is Emily Claypool of McMean, uh, do you have anything that you want to add um, about this incredible young student and this process? I mean, I feel it's very warming to hear her speak about the project and how she really felt empowered to lead. Um, it really was a student-led project, and that's one of the reasons I love Epic Art so much is because of the open-endedness and their ability to identify this problem, which was creating the sense of connection and then seeing where this would go. Um, I'm just really proud of her, and I'm happy to be a part of this. Wow. And uh, Matthew, do you have anything that uh, you would like to add as well? Yeah, so working with the students was absolutely amazing. They actually chose to do three projects in one. So they did the uh, sign language project that you see up. Um, they also made postcards, which you can come and get, and you can get one of these postcards. They're free, and you can send them to either a loved one, or you can mail them back to Redline with a message of hope to the general universe. Um, and as well as... They did some collage to express how they were feeling during this pandemic. So really, it was a multi-level, multimedia uh, project, and I'm just so proud of the students. And em uh, Emily was so wonderful to work with, and Redline and the program. So I'm just, I'm just overwhelmed with joy. So thank you, thank Jeez. you guys, thank you, brother. What are you holding in your hand? What is that? Oh, this is this is the card, <laughs> right here, the postcard that you can get. Uh, and you can come get one of these and mail it to a loved one to tell them how much you love them during this time when they don't, when you can't give someone a hug and see them in person. So, yeah. And that's the heart of socially engaged art, right? That we get people involved in the artwork itself. Uh, Ella, before we get out of here, do you want to show us uh, some American Sign Language uh, and what you guys learned doing this process and what people are supposed to do when they come and see your, uh, your exhibition? Um, so, yes. We have a camera right here, and it's displayed on like a projector. So you can sign the quotes. There's one up top, there's one right here, and there's one right here. So um, as an example, I wish... you knew 
Yeah. Do you know where the big, the big speaker is? How much I love you. Thank you, Anna. Thank you so much. All right, thank you. Uh, I think we're ready to move on uh, to our next exhibition. You want to wave to everybody in Facebook and Instagram land? <laughs> All right, thank you so much. All right, and let's take a walk over here. We're going to continue through the exhibition and make it back over here to Kuntz Miller Creative Arts Academy. And, oh, we've got a whole team of people here. I want to introduce you to an amazing collaboration here with multiple things happening with a multimedia uh, component to the exhibition. So this is Cherish Marquez, resident artist here at Redline Contemporary Art Center and collaborating teacher in Christy Burke. Um, oh, you've got some flowers already. Oh, Look yeah, at that. Yeah, yeah, flowers for the teacher. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, I would love uh, to kind of take a step back and allow you guys to talk about this process, um, the young people that you worked with, and some of the interactive things uh, that people can do when they're here and how they can also donate to a good cause based on um, the artwork that your young people created. So I'm just going to step back and listen as you guys share with us. Okay. Well, thank you, JC. Um, I'm so honored to work with Cherish this year. Um, and for most of our students, uh, their theme became empowerment of themselves. This was a really difficult year for everyone. We know that, but especially our students. So they wanted to do um, artwork about subjects that were near and dear to them. Um, and Cherish was great at... Um, just nurturing their creativity. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, thank you. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, so I think um, that the students did like really great work, and it's focused on a lot of social justice issues, which I think brought out um, like more emotions and stuff for them. And I, I think I love it how they were able to express themselves in this way. Um, yeah, it's, uh, we did a little bit of everything and it's awesome. Um, yeah. Yeah, so uh, we didn't limit the kids or censor what they could do in their art and some of our students created pieces, um, sculpture-like, to share and show what was near and dear to them about uh, immigration and deportation and abolishing ICE. Um, because everything in, you know, the media these days are, um, for the younger generation is so based in e equity. We also had a lot of students who thought, um, hey, what could I do with my privilege right now to help others? And so we have three different students who um, thought about three different themes, social justice themes that were really important to them. And they created t-shirts and we're selling them. We're just um, actually not selling them. But for a suggested donation, we have stickers, T-shirts, and it goes to three different charities that are, again, really important to our students. So we're just really proud of them. It yeah. came together so well this year. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. to support these causes. We've got the hashtag humankind. You can also donate to the Blue Bench. You can donate to the Center for American Progress as well. While you're here at Redline, um, you'll see throughout the entire exhibition that we have exhibition guides. It's just a few of them laying around as we are trying to be conscious of uh, shared materials. Um, but there's also a QR code. So when you come to visit, you can just pull out your phone, scan this QR code, and you'll be able to see our full uh, gallery guide with all of our students' um, artist statements. Um, and we encourage you guys to read through all of them. Um, it's quite a few, uh, as a matter of fact. Uh, when I was doing the tally um, as to how many students we had worked with over the course of the last year here, uh, we just hit 251. 251 students from across 25 different schools uh, here, uh, not only in the Denver metro area, but all the way out in Aurora. And I'd like to come over here and kind of talk about one of those projects uh, as we've got this mural right here. I know our community partner is somewhere floating around here, but uh, there's so much energy buzzing right now um, that I'm sure he's connecting with others. Um, this is Maracek Middle School. The collaborating 
community partner was Brandon Sweeney, and here he comes right now. Yeah, Brandon, I need you over here, brother. Yes, sir. He worked with Thomas Detour Evans on creating this community mural for our young students, our young brothers of color, here at Maracek. And it's an honor to be here um, with you today. Um, we may or may not have mentioned that today is uh, it's a sad day in American history as we not celebrate but remember um, the massacre uh, in Greenwood, Tulsa, uh, and what that meant um, for people of color, what it meant for independence, what it meant for black wealth as Black Wall Street was burned and bombed. Um, and working with, with young people, especially young people of color, can you talk about what this particular project meant to you personally and to the students that you work with, Brandon? Yeah, I mean, I think for myself, this is just, it's really just a culmination of a journey. Um, just just taking on the work that we do is it, it's, it's really, it's really inspiring uh, to be able to see young men, especially young men who, um, who just tend to, to just be pushed into this system and into this prison, uh, the school to prison pipeline. Uh, so to be an active uh, stoppage for that is, is just inspiring for me and that's something that I strive uh, to do. And so to be able to see them uh, create this work um, and just really just unapolog unapologetically be themselves mm -hmm. uh, and not worry about anybody else or the consequences that come with it because they know I'm gonna ride for them no matter what. Um, that's just, it's just truly inspiring and something that I like to do. I appreciate you because we've been working on this uh, for almost a year, you know, and making this happen. And um, I'd love to hear a little bit more about what this mural actually is. It's interactive, right? Yes, sir. And it actually will live at Maracek. Um, yeah. Tell us a little bit about what will happen once it's there at Maracek. Yeah, so what's going to happen is we are going to uh, basically allow students at, at Maracek to to add their voice to the to the piece as well. So we've you know, we we found our favorite social justice quotes, and we want to open that opportunity up uh, for the students from Marachik too. So that way, you know, we, it's a living, breathing uh, community piece. Uh, and yes, we were, you know, the backbone behind it, but we want to open it up and make sure we're inclusive to everybody, um, and make sure that everybody feels um, that they can be a part of this message, whether you're, no matter what culture you're from, no matter what background that you are. Um, and so, yeah. So when it goes back to Marachik, it's going to open up to the rest of the school. Um, and then, from my understanding, each quote that is placed on there, there's going to be like a study around it uh, for the school. For the school, so like, let's say they, they choose a particular quote, they'll do like a deep dive, wow. um, and just do just bring some learning into the classroom. And then it also exists on the mural, so that's that's pretty dope. Wow! Can you read some of the quotes? Can you uh, tell us some of the quotes that your young people that were just yeah, in yeah. here the other day uh, sure. came in and wrote? Um, so I know one that they were really passionate about was you can jail a revolutionary but you can't jail a revolution particularly because that movie um, Judas and the Black Messiah came out and I know that that was an enlightening for a lot of them uh, so I know that was an important one um, the time is always right to do what is right MLK he was a big inspiration uh, for some of the quotes on this um, be a voice not an echo I think that was really important for them uh, because they I think they see time and time again just on the news and just being around um, that a lot of people stand back, right? And a lot of people don't necessarily do enough. Um, and so they wanted to definitely highlight that and just do not be silent. Like, that's one of the major ones. Um, so, yeah, those are, like, some of the ones that, that stick out to me. Well, one more. It's not enough to be compassionate. You must act, right? So we, it's, it's, you got to put that action behind it. I, I know a lot of people like to talk, um, but talk is not enough. Right? We got to put action behind it. Wow, I appreciate it. Um, thank you so much uh, once again, and I hope that uh, you know we continue to work together, um, especially supporting Aurora. For sure. Um, we, we, I, you know, will. I live in Aurora. Uh, you know, I was raised in Aurora too, and it's really important that we have that that Denver Aurora connection. So thank you so much for reaching out, appreciate keeping you. it going, and we're we're going to continue to work together and to continue to support our young people out there in Aurora. Yes, sir. We will definitely do that. I'm already they're already thinking like, hmm, what are we going to do next? What are we going to do next? So <laughs> I think they're excited. All right. Beautiful. All right, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. All right. We're going to keep moving back over here. 
and uh, we're going to come back around to yet another Kuntz Miller Creative Arts Academy um, exhibition. And yes, oh, we've got another one of our collaborators, another artist teacher uh, right here in Abby Harkey. Oh, with one of their students too at the same time. Great. Yes, this is Tina Martinez, absolutely. And what I would love to do is uh, kind of do the same thing, which is kind of take a step back, let you kind of talk about this incredible project that you guys have worked on. We've worked together for years doing um, outdoor public art you know, together with kids um, for a couple of years now, and this is no exception here. Um, you can please tell us about your partnering artist, the process, and this exceptional exhibition that our entire back wall. <laughs> Thanks. Hi, everybody. So we are from Coons Miller Creative Arts Academy, and we painted a giant mural at the entrance to our school. This video is chronicling the process. It's a student-made time-lapse video by David. And the theme of the mural was about inclusion and diversity and making sure that everybody who walks through our doors feels welcomed. And because our school mascot is a dragon, we decided to wrap the four pillars that are at the entrance of our school with four different dragons from four different cultures that are represented by the student demographics in our school. So they also, Tina's idea, represent the four elements. So we have a Vietnamese water dragon, we have an African earth dragon or a rainbow serpent, we have the Quetzalcoatl for air, and a European fire dragon. And we have lots of butterflies also in the mural to represent uh, diversity, uh, hope, freedom, transformation. This has been such a transformative year for everybody uh, with COVID and so much like death and rebirth. So the butterflies represent that as well as a trail of marigold flowers, which also connects the world of the past to the world of our present, the living and the dead. Um, and what else is in the mural? What other symbols? Oh, the power fist is in the body of the butterfly. We have some examples of that also in our hand-painted butterflies, each one representing transformation and hope and empowerment and change and diversity. And this wall is um, projects that came out of my class that were independent projects that students created simultaneous to the mural. And I'm going to give the mic to Tina because her piece is like the heartbeat of the whole wall, um, and she can tell you more about it. So with my project, I wanted to focus on LGBTQ rights, so that symbolizes the rainbow colors along the heart. And with the chains like wrapping around the heart and kind of like breaking free, coming off of the wall and all that symbolizes like there's hope for change and the clouds and all the lights just make this like a kind of heavenly hopeful like mood and all the veins connecting to everybody else's art pieces like kind of symbolize that we're all in this together and yeah the heart just beats for everybody else's artwork yeah that's pretty much it and you can see the theme of the other artworks are a lot about diversity and uh, immigration rights, racism, Black Lives Matter, uh, pay equity between men and women, um, neurodivergence awareness, uh, environmentalism, indigenous rights, women's rights. So these are all things that were really important to students that uh, they wanted to create these independent projects about. And the butterflies were also created by all of our students. And I'd like to introduce Karma, who was our um, master artist. Karma Lee was our muralist who helped us to execute the mural. And anything you want to say about the process? Um, anything about the process? Yeah, it was very intense. And it was really fun to watch the students um, kind of like do things that they never had done before, I guess. Um, watching some of the students like learning how to use stencil or spray paint with stencils was really dope because it's like this one here over here was really her and this other girl, um, Halima, really killed it with the stencils to the point where they didn't really need to use a bunch of extra protection around everything. And um, yeah, it was a lot of fun. That's it. Thank you. <laughs>
Well, thanks, guys, uh, for yet another uh, amazing collaboration. Um, and working with friends uh, in community um, is something that uh, that warms my heart. And so um, thank you for pushing through everything, especially the challenges of the pandemic, to make sure that you are beautifying not just your school, but the entire neighborhood, right? And showing the power of young people and their art. So thank you for contributing as well. Keep working, keep pushing, um, because you have a voice. And we want to make sure that that voice is heard, right? Yeah, yeah, okay. All right, once again, Kuntz Miller, Creative Arts Academy. Thank you so much. Um, I think we're gonna move over right now uh, next to another community partner. Um, this is Art Street. Whoa, all right, oh, wow. And uh, this is a special uh, treat for me um, as Miss Amy Banker is uh, my mentor and taught me everything that I know about working in community um, with the arts. Um, and so I'd like to give you, yeah, it most certainly. <laughs> I want to give you the opportunity um, to kind of talk about yourself, talk about um, Art Street and this incredible collaboration that you had with another good friend of mine, Mr. Juan Fuentes, um, and in, his work uh, here. So come, come on, on in, in and uh, I'm going to take a step back and I'd love to hear a little bit more about the work that you guys are doing, have done, and uh, what's next. Absolutely. So we are Art Street, um, which is a nonprofit um, associated with um, Denver Housing Authority, um, and we work with teenagers ages 14 clear up actually to young adults at age 24 um, working in the creative industries and trying to help youth reach their educational and employment goals through that we work with different schools um, and different programs and have coordinated with Redline who we love and working on this epic project so with this project in particular we've worked with artist Juan Fuentes um, photographer who is amazing um, and has lived in the communities that a lot of our young artists have as well and um, they love photography so it was a perfect match um, and we have one of our young students here I am going to let them talk about the actual projects we had two different projects so I'm gonna let um, Abby start to talk about the video animation project with photography that we did um, with youth from all different high schools and which high school she's from. And then I'll let Juan talk about the work with photography and collage and wheat pasting that we did with Colorado High School Charter. So Abby, introduce yourself and take it away. Hi, I'm Abby. I am a a now sophomore at George Washington High School. Um, I worked with Art Street uh, this past spring. Um, I got introduced to Art Street by one of my teachers after taking a photography class. And I really loved just working with d way different things that I'm used to during this time. I've never worked at any kind of animation ever before. I've done painting and photography only. Um, right there. That's coming up. You want to talk about that a little bit, Abby, as you're going? Um, so I chose the Black Lives Matter movement um, as my project. Our main topic was to pick an issue that we wanted to change or bring up in the world. Um, I went around Denver and took a bunch of pictures of murals and signs that all that I could find that had something to do with Black Lives Matter. Um, this issue is important to me because I just, I know that there's so many people who are scared to do things because of certain people that think it's wrong and I know certain friends who are just even scared to walk down the street after dark or even during the daytime and I just really wanted to make sure that it was shown that it's okay to just do whatever you want and not to be scared at all. Great. Do you have hope for the future around that issue? Yeah, I, I have hope that it's brought up in more conversation and changed so that people aren't scared to do whatever they want and just have, just to be happy, yeah. Great. And how was it working with you? It was really fun and really educating to just have different kind of views, even with Juan and with my peers that I worked with. Great. Awesome. Juan, do you want to take a pause working with the youth and then also talk about 
Yeah, no, it was great. Uh, my name is Juan Fuentes. Um, I'm an artist who's been hard, you know, doing the Epic <clears throat> program for several years now, and this is my second year with Art Street. And um, yeah, these past two two semesters have been um, interesting to say the least. But it was a great opportunity to kind of um, shift photography into more introspective uh, uh, take on it, and, and have them kind of. Uh, Photograph themselves and, and and talk about certain issues that were um, th that that we're all kind of dealing with at the moment and and seeing how they insert themselves within that issue and how they dissect that through all these things that are happening right now and also seeing how their minds are working towards the future and what they want to bring into this into what the solutions might look like. But yeah. I guess um, working with the like animation aspect of it, it was uh, yeah a lot of self portraiture on all of it, but also bringing in um, Chelsea, who's incredible with animation, and uh, helping them uh, make something that will make this being projected downtown on the on the tower is is incredible to see. It's just so big, and it's bigger. Certain issues you can really. Um, bring forth into like everyday conversation by having it in public space um but also now having the gallery open feels really incredible to be speaking on, on, on a lot of these issues and then on this aspect of of our work uh i teamed up with jasmine winter uh, who had them focus again on on certain issues but this was really more uh a, a collage piece, a collaborative piece between all of us and, and kind of br incorporating photography but also their own sketches and their own drawings to kind of express themselves in a way that was very loose, very free. Um, it's not like your typical idea of what like art might look like but it, it's more so something that you might see on the street um, as as forms of expressions, forms of resistance, forms of activism. And uh, this is what we really wanted to capture on this side. Um, but yeah. Anything? <laughs> We're just talking. Like shout out tonight? Oh, no, we didn't. Oh, man, look at everything that you guys are doing at the same time. So uh, outside of having this incredible exhibition that's here, uh, you guys are also going to be showing some of your artwork um, tonight on 16th Street. Is that right? That's correct, JC. <laughs> <laughs> Ham it up. Let's go. We, we know Woo! what to do. We know how to promote. We know how to yes. promote. <laughs> Come down to 16th Street Mall tonight, 9 o'clock at dusk to when it gets very dark. Um, it'll probably go until about midnight, 16th Street Mall at Arapaho and 16th, and you can see all of this artwork projected onto the May DNF clock tower. Wow. Um, and it looks amazing from there. So please come down and see that artwork. And of course, come to Redline through the month of June, to see all of this fabulous artwork that uh, JC and all of the staff here put together with all of the amazing artists, teachers, you. The end. Well, the end. <laughs> <laughs> so you heard it from Amy. Uh, you don't want to miss this tonight at 9 o'clock at uh, the Clock Tower on 16th Street. Um, you can see some of the uh, incredible photography, animation, all of the uh, the imagery that these young students have done. Um, and it's a, it's, a, it's a real cohort of uh, DPS students, interns, um, and Art Street students um, that have put this together. And we couldn't be more proud of this partnership and all of our partnerships. So thank you, Amy. Um, we're getting ready to round this out, and I've got a, a couple more schools that I want to um, give a shout out to. Even though we don't have any students or any of the artists here right now, I want to give another shout out to Coons Miller Creative Arts Academy and artist Ben Coleman with his uh, associate teacher, uh, Joshua Burke. They worked on actually creating um, speakers with the kids. Not only do we work with uh, the art teachers um, during Epic Arts, but also science teachers, also math teachers. And so this uh, component of the exhibition was a partnership between the physics teacher and a sound engineer here at Redline. And Ben is way more than a sound engineer, but um, he's in absolutely um, incredible and impressive to watch. Um, and so they worked on creating video and sound and an interactive experience that's like none other. You have to come here to witness this. 
And then another uh, incredible partnership that we also fostered too was between another one of our artists here at Redline and Wani and also Mr. Joshua Burke. They worked on a surrealist visual experience combining animation, sound, color, depth, value, all of the things that you can possibly think of in design mixed into one. How do you take sound and give it a shape? How do you take sound and give it a color? That's the project that they worked on here. Make sure that you look out for Juanine Young and all the work that she's doing out there. Shout out to Juanine. Thank you so much for supporting Redline and all of our programs, including Epic Arts. Let's take a walk over here as we've got a few more of our community partners. Oh, as a matter of fact, I see another one of our community members um, with her son over here, and I'd love to kind of uh, highlight her work and their work. I've got Roberto here, who is also one of our uh, young artists here. Didn't mean to throw the spotlight on you guys so quickly. Ephraim, you can come in and wave to everybody. Hey, if you come down to Redline Contemporary Art Center, you're going to see this young man sitting up front. He is there to greet you and make sure that uh, you get to you meet with speak? the artists, see the artwork, um, and can experience everything here at Redline. I know. Thanks, Ephraim. I didn't mean to put you on the spot like that. Um, Roberto, it's so amazing to have you here. I'd love to uh, take a second since you're here to kind of talk about your artwork and um, what this particular project has meant to you. So basically, I think Redline was a great opportunity to uh, kind of promote my mom's organization about uh, Sanctuary for All. Can you tell us who your mom is? My mom is Geneva Guerra. Um, she is a very brave person, and I look up to her a lot because she's very inspiring to me. I've always looked up to her my whole life. So I think that it's a great opportunity to promote an organization that she created and she has worked with. She was actually working on it and for it. Uh, before we came here, so I think, I think my art is a great, like, picture of all the work she's done, mm. and it's a way to convey my feelings and the way I think of my mother through art. Wow, that's that's so powerful to hear. Um, and you also got some other members of your family here. You guys want to come over here real quick? You don't have to say necessarily anything, but I do want to honor um, you being in space um, with us. Um, you know, the work that you've done through Sanctuary is something that uh, my family has also taken notice of, and we want to support you as much as possible. For those of you guys watching that don't know, uh, you know, Jeanette uh, was Time Magazine's uh, in the top 100 uh, influential people of the year back in 2017 for your work um, for immigration rights and immigration reform um, as well. And we just want to recognize that and say thank you. Is there anything that you'd like to say uh, to anyone here listening? Yeah, only thank you for this opportunity for my boy. Uh, the art is very important. It's one form to express your emotions and the same recognize uh, for different platforms the art. Uh, social justice. Uh, in my case, today no is my day, it's the day they make boy. <laughs> I, the attention is for my boy. Yeah. But uh, thank you for this opportunity. Uh, Red Line open spaces for young people, express and you are, your emotions, and at the same time, him fighting together me for a long time. As I'm proud of him. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you for your bravery. Thank you for your family uh, and sharing your artwork. You guys are my young artists too, right? Yeah, it's my granddaughter. She is in this moment open your business. Wow. The swap. Wow. Uh, she created your you logo. Oh, wow. She's same as art. Well, we have to support entrepreneurship. We have to pr promote business too. Uh, do you have a website or someplace where we can find your, uh, yeah, she has your company? Yeah, on, on Instagram? Yeah, we're yeah. on Instagram. Is Rosie? Um, Rosie's uh, Creations. All right. <laughs> Rosie's Creations on Instagram. Thank you so much. We appreciate you guys being here in space with us and creating. Um, and hopefully uh, we continue to work together. And I look forward to seeing more of your artwork. Thank you. Yeah. Thank All you right. So Let's take a, uh, a walk back over here um, and see. Oh, here's uh, one of our partners here. There's Joshua right there. How you doing, brother? <laughs> How you doing, I'm doing um, rounding out the day, and uh, just let me know um, if you have anything to say about the project that you worked on with two incredible artists. No, you can just hold that. Okay. Yeah, um, and uh, Ben Coleman and with Juanin Young. Is there anything about the project that you want um, the rest of, uh, of the world out there to know about? Yeah, so I would just say this was like just an amazing opportunity, especially this year, to like empower our students to do like amazing things and just to like 
get their hands on things finally and to make life terrible. I gotta hold it back up. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I wasn't sure. Um, and so it was just really cool to have that to work with in two of my classes and just to see how much work I actually got back from the students and just how much they were invested in it was incredible. Wow. Wow. Can you tell us as a science teacher what it was like working with an artist in the pandemic? <laughs> So it was honestly, it was like the best because like I like to have kids with their hands on things and to be working with their hands and like that wasn't an option until this art project came around. And so being able to get back to what was like kind of normal was just so amazing with our students. Wow. Well, thank you, Joshua. I appreciate yeah. that. Um, and for those of you guys that don't know, it's a husband and wife couple here, both teachers at the same school. I want to shout out to Coots Miller Creative Arts Academy. Thank you so much for sharing your students, your work, your passion, and your art. With thank all you of us. for putting thank all this together and giving thank us you. this opportunity. No worries. You guys are the best. Yeah. All right. We're going to round this out right now um, by coming to. Um, oh, before we hit our final school, we do have a music video too that was produced. Um, by the students at Bruce Randolph High School. Um, their uh, supporting teacher was Katrina Hedrick, um, and they created a spirit song uh, for Bruce Randolph. So you can come here and actually listen to this spirit song that they created um, just for this particular project. Um, so shout out to Bruce Randolph and all our community partners there. Shout out to Ted, shout out to Scott, shout out to the principal, shout out to everybody there at Bruce Randolph. They're one of our favorite community partners and uh, we couldn't be more happy. Um, same thing for Whittier ECE. I want to give a special shout out to Miss Gus over there at Whittier ECE. Make sure that you come out here to Redline. You're going to miss all of this incredibleness. Um, we've seen that these students over the course of the last year obviously have created so much. Um, and I think that that can't be exemplified any more than this particular school here that we're about to take a look at. Um, this is Joliet Learning Center. And I want you to kind of take a second to kind of look around um, at this work as, man, uh, we've got Vanessa Hayes Quintana over here and partnering artist Tycho Chandler. Don't walk away. No, 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 no. Tycho, we need you over this way. Tycho is one of the newest resident artists here at Redline Contemporary Arts Center. And this is Vanessa Hayes Quintana, one of our um, longest uh, community partners who's been doing the Epic uh, Arts program for years. And they have created something really unique really special with these students over this course of time, including this fabulous tapestry that's hanging here in this space. Um, I've never seen anything hung quite like this um, in this space, and I can't thank Tycho and Vanessa enough for being able to bring something so powerful, so unique to our students, and then also back to our community here at Redline. So um, can you guys talk about what it was like working together and this really unique situation that you guys were in because you didn't really have a break away from your students. You were in person with your students um, through much of this and still creating with them. So can you talk a little bit about what that might have been like in this experience? Oh, let's see here. There's so much to say. So working with, Ty working with Tycho, I, this is an amazing woman. Oh, no, <laughs> it makes me get a little teary-eyed because she's, yeah, she's so wonderful. Um, but the material that she works with, the Tyvek material, like the building material, it's it's one of those things where because our students love to work hands on and they like they're the kinesthetic learners, I thought, oh my gosh, our students are gonna love working with the material that Tyco works with. So being in person most of the year has been really special for our school because even though it's been really tough, it's also with its challenges has been exciting because our students have had the opportunity to, um, even though it's taken them a long time, it, they've had the opportunity to take time with their work that they need. Sorry, my mask. <laughs> to um, just sit with their work and, and do a good job with it. I mean, it's hard to explain. Yeah. It's just such what a, would you say? It's just such an amazing experience through the EPIC program for me, first time to join that. It just to see amazing. So see that. Kids are so struggle. We all struggle, but amazing to see how kids' energy toward art and that is working with Vanessa was just such a amazing. And then the, we we made in this uh, art class, but bring everything. This was all part and spend four days to four days to install was amazing. Just uh, yeah. 
We have two types of projects we did. Um, with the pandemic, our students had a tough time focusing and it was tough for them to work together. So one of their projects is an abstract self-portrait and they just drew from the space that they were in emotionally to create something they felt emulated where they were right now in their experience being separated from their friends and what, what helped them be strong. So that's part of our installation is are the abstract self-portraits. And then with the printmaking, we experimented with lino cuts and screen prints. And with the mono printing on the Tyvek, we used stencils stencils and stamps and students just got to explore with Tycho in the room and it was so fun for them to interact with her and 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 be able to um, use her as a, as a creative sounding board so and it was really awesome too because we got to have Tycho come to our classroom a few times which is also really special because being separated from people in general, our students actually got to work with a real artist, so that's also <laughs> exciting. So I think this opportunity for them has been so wonderful because it helps them learn that even though they're young, they still have a voice and can express, um, they can express themselves through their art and, and they, can, they can realize, hey, even though I'm a young person, I can build a happy, strong, healthy community and art can be a vehicle for that. And I really believe that that's something that they've been able to accomplish here today. Yeah. Thank you. Wow, um, can we take a walk around this uh, impressive uh, installation wall piece space that we are taking back? We talk about reclaiming our space and reclaiming our space together. Uh, I think that this really exemplifies that. Can we kind of take a walk through this explosion of color and, yes. uh, and kind of see. So why don't you come over on this side because we've got stuff, mache, we've got dolls. Um, I, I'd love for you to kind of give us a, a brief kind of explanation as to each one of these pieces as we kind of circle around this wall, um, okay. especially one of my favorite pieces, which is this mask okay. on the other side. I can't <laughs> wait to hear you talk about that. Okay. Well, as I explained before, we did lots of um, different types of printmaking. So, the lino cuts are in the mask as well as just hung around this little space here. And all the students used part of their abstract self-portrait ideas to create the lino cuts. So those are hung on the wall, some of them are on the mask. Um, and then on this side with the prints, the abstract self-portraits, most of them are sculptural because our students like to work kinesthetically. And I always let them know that working big is fun because it doesn't have to be small like their own hands. They can make things bigger than life size. So the mask contains their screen prints. And in our school, we do lots of affective education. So all of the social emotional learning they do and helping each other build and maintain positive communities. Um, they use their words in their affective education class and we turn them into the screen prints that they, that they um, did in art class. So some of those prints um, are multiples, as you can see. We have, we, and that's fun too, because lots of students have, oh, I got one picture or I got one piece of art. So they loved creating multiples of the same piece. So there's some, there's some prints down here and kind of around the, around the whole space here. Can we go so, over here to this uh, brain yeah. and uh, some of these other prints that are uh, done? Um, yeah. Especially, I mean, I, I want us to get to this gigantic robot that was created. <laughs> and I'd love for you to kind of tell the story uh, of, okay. that, uh, of that student who created uh, this gigantic robot that I thought was so fun to put together here. Okay, um, well the brain, that is the brain child of our student Lula Gata. And she loves science, she loves, um, she loves the brain. She's a very bright, intelligent young gal who really struggles like all of our students do with their social emotional parts of their life. So, so she was somebody who has lots of big ideas and doesn't really know or understand how she can realize them. So when you say, hey, would you like to make a big brain? She's like, yeah, of course I would. Or, or would you like to um, draw about how you feel? And 
So her brain here is coupled with her puzzle print, and you can see her puzzle prints throughout the, also see them throughout the, um, the um, exhibition. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> the exhibition. That's all good. Happens to so me too. her puzzle print that she did with her screen print, she stuck on the projector screen and wanted that to be kind of part of her brain. So it just, like in with the abstract self portraits, this was just where the students are in their emotional space and how they're, how they're feeling and coping with the world right now. And they're showing that through their art. So um, this is uh, Daniel's, this is Daniel's robot. Um, Daniel is new to our school and he loves robots. Wow. <laughs> um, he did a lot of uh, pencil mock-ups of his robots and they're tiny. And I and I said, Oh, would you want you want to make a robot? Is that? He's like, Well, that's who I am, and that that's that's my thing. So for a sense of scale, uh, I'm six one. Can you kind of pan back a little <laughs> bit so we can get an idea of how exact, how big this and massive this piece is that was done by just one student? Wow. It's awesome. Yeah. Wow. So Daniel is very adamant that. He had the largest piece of art in the show, and he would ask me almost every day, is this the largest piece of art? I said, you know, Dan, there's going to be a lot of great stuff here, and I don't know. We're just going to have to wait and see. So he hasn't shown up yet. I'm excited for him to see his work here. Um, and he loves, he loved building with his hands once again. I mean, they just love that, right? Yeah. It's that kinesthetic movement. Yes. And... I'm not sure what else I, I, I think it speaks for itself. I yeah. think that's the, <laughs> that's, I, I think that's it. I mean, uh, it, you know, for me, just knowing that the inspiration behind it was a self portrait, uh, really hits, really hits because it's so powerful here. Yeah. 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 I think that's the biggest part of being here with these students work is, is when you are with them every single day and you see the struggles that they go through, especially in our building, um, and for them to see that they can accomplish something so wonderful is like just makes me get all teary. Wow, yeah. <laughs> to write, it's great. Wow. So, well, thank you. Thank you, Vanessa. I really thank appreciate you. it. Thank you, Tycho, um, as well. Thank you for contributing so much to our community. Thank you for supporting our community, our students, oh, our artists, um, everything. Thank you. And thank you for being and, and, and thank fighting you. and thank fighting. You. We will we'll keep supporting and we hope that uh, we keep the partnership going and thriving um, going into next year and beyond. Um, we understand how important this project has been, um, especially yeah. during, um, you know, the pandemic and everything else that's happening right now in the world and how arts can really be a connective um, vehicle for people. Right. It can make hard things palatable. It can make isolation and depression and loneliness um not not as hard hitting because we are all connected through these ideas right yes. when i saw that robot i saw myself in that <laughs> robot before i saw you know a student or the heart of a child because that's kind of how i feel you know kind of like my back's against the wall and uh and but still bulky and taking up space and kind of menacing a little bit like that's how I kind of feel at it's times. It's so poetic, all of it, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it is. Exactly, it is. And that is at, at the yeah. heart of what we were trying to do here, which is amplify those voices and let our students know that it's okay to feel that way. It's okay to feel that way and you're not alone, right? You're not alone. We are all connected. And art, I think, is the best vehicle to do that. So thank you both so much for your dedication to uh, keeping us sane <laughs> during well, all of this madness. You. And also, thank you for creating this opportunity here because I don't know many, uh, I don't know many students who have been able to actually have an actual exhibition where people can come and enjoy their work. And, and online, because we can do these things online, that is good. But this is better. We love it more. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it has been wonderful just to be together with people and, and reconnect. Yeah. It's Thank awesome. You. Thank you for yeah. creating this for us, Stacey. Well, Thank you uh, so you know, it's my pleasure, and I, I want us to do more of it. So <laughs> you guys stay tuned. Um, this particular show is up until the 26th. Um, so you have an opportunity to come down during our normal hours um, to experience all of this artwork. Um, you don't need to set an appointment. You can just come in. Um, and while you're here, you can also talk to any of our resident artists um, that are here. Our residency program is our flagship program. And without it, we wouldn't have artists to be able to send out to our teachers.
features to our community um, to be able to create these uh, opportunities and these exhibitions and these pieces and this, um, this real mic microcosm, really a macrocosm of what it is that we've lost and what we really want to get back. So thank you guys uh, so much. I see one more young person I want to talk to. Jesse, let me get, let me get him over there. Thank, thank you. you. I will talk to you guys oh, soon. You We're going to round um, all of this out. Um, I think in, 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 in a, in a well-fitting fashion, um, back here where we started all of this. Oh, shout out to my friend Alicia B., also a mentor in our Art Core program and one of the sickest DJs you'll ever, ever meet. Um, hold on. Can I, can I get the mic to Alicia B. real quick? I want Alicia to shout herself out. She's going to be um, providing us with some sounds, but at the same time, she's a valued community member, artist, partner, and friend. I want to uh, let you kind of talk a little bit about what you do. Oh, my gosh. Um... Okay, that's, uh, do you ever feel put on the spot by your friends who know people with cameras? Well, friends, today that's what happening, what's happened to me. <laughs> My name is DJ Alicia B. I, man, I really like working with youth. Um, the brilliance of their creativity is sort of breathtaking, I think is the correct word for it. And so as such, I've been a um, mentor with, with Art Corp for I think this is my fourth time, maybe third time, maybe fourth or fifth, fourth or fifth. Um, and every time they pair me with these, these brilliant young people who just create this whole concept off a conversation we had one time. Have you ever, have you ever seen that? It's amazing. It's amazing. So, um, and like working in the adult world, um, like sometimes you forget the magic of what the creation looks like and the aha moment that comes when when they do it, right? Um, so like it's it's an incredible thing, and I'm just really I'm just really blessed that I can participate. And then also come in DJ when when called, like kind of like Batman, they just shine the Alicia B signal, and here I come with my turntable. That's pretty much all. I got. <laughs> Thank you, Alicia B. Uh, oh, I hope, I hope that works. I, I'm pretty sure uh, it did. Thank you once again for being a community partner and friend and artist. Thank you so much for being able to create the fun. Like, I don't know where you can find that in the adult world. Um, find it right here. We find it right here. Where do you find that besides here? I don't know. I don't know where you're doing it. Roger that. Thank you. Um, Finally, I've got one last student here uh, from Kuntz Miller Creative Arts Academy. This is the microphone. Just hold it kind of close to your mouth. Uh, this is Jesse. Participated um, in this particular uh, uh, project with uh, Miss Burke um, and Sarah. Uh, and I just wanted to give you an opportunity because I saw a video um, of you kind of talking about this project and the impact it had on you. Can you kind of summarize everything that we've seen here today about what Epic Arts means um, to you as a, a person, a human, and an artist? and uh, where you're taking your art now? Yeah, so basically just from uh, just seeing all the different artworks here, I'm able to see different ideas, different feelings that everyone was able to give out. Not only that, but we were able to express ourselves during uh, a pandemic, which many people would believe would never happen. But seeing this and like all my friends, all the people are actually like committed to a project that was amazing from the different paintings, the different buildings we had, I felt like it was something that I'd remember for the rest of my life. It was an honor doing this, and I hope that by me being able to actually express myself, it could probably lay a path for future artworks to come. Wow, uh, couldn't have been said better. Um, thank you so much, Jesse. Uh, we will be looking out for you, um, especially with your artwork, and we hope that uh, you continue on with these projects and continue to connect with us and continue to create. Yes. All right. Thank you so All much. Right, thank you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are getting to end this. Oh, there's Gonzo right here. I'm sure he has something to ask me. My family's here. Oh, my family's yeah. here. That's fantastic. I want to give a shout out to Gonzo. Um, this is our community studio uh, coordinator. Um, you can find him here every day of the week, um, connecting with community. He is really the heartbeat of this building and make sure that our artists always have what they need, whether it is space, whether it's materials, whether it's just a shoulder to cry on or an ear to listen. Um, and it, you, you know, I, I find you to be um, one of the most important people that I've met in my journey here and my journey through arts and connecting with community. So I just wanted to give you a shout out. If there's anything you want to say, you want to invite people out to anything you know, that we're it's, doing. Uh, it's really good to feel the energy back in this building. Uh, the, about this time last year, I came through the building. It was dark. 
lonely, miserable, depressing, and I didn't come back in here for another eight months. But since we've uh, tried to open this place back up, it's good to feel the, the life and energy coming and bump, pumping back into the place. Uh, I'm just glad to be part of this. I'm having a good time, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you, Gonzo. Um, and I think that that's, uh, thank you, I appreciate it. Uh, no better way to, uh, to end uh, than with Gonzo here. Let's take a, a walk back around into this space and see if we can find uh, Miss Emma. And, uh, oh, there she is. And uh, if you want to pan real quick, this is my family. There's my son right there. Solomon, hey, what's up, dude? <laughs> what's up? Oh, <laughs> here's my little guy just finished uh, virtual first grade. Yay, virtual first grade graduate. <laughs> it's awesome. And there's my wife. There's Sydney and little River. Hey, River. There's our little baby, our little uh, year and a half old, little 18 month old. Um, and so that's what this is. This is community. And um, this is our space. Um, and we are reclaiming our space right now. Um, oh, and there are my in-laws too. There we go. There's Chris and Noreen. Everybody wave. Yay. All right. I know. I didn't mean to put you on the spot like that. <laughs> this is their first time in the space right now. And so um, I I'd like to welcome you to come in and, and enjoy the energy and see some of the art and some of the students and the teachers and the artists that are all connecting in community right now. I'm so glad that you guys were able to come out. Thank you. Yay! Yeah, <laughs> All right. Uh, Miss Emma, can I steal you away for one second just to say goodbye? Um, we've taken more time than uh, we thought we would, but that usually happens here at, uh, at Redline. Um, thank you so much. Um, we really want to um, express all of our thanks to all of our community partners, all of our donors, all of our artists, our mentors, our mentees. Yes. Oh my goodness, there's yeah. so many people. The staff at Bruce Randolph and Whittier Schools, like I can't thank all of you enough. Yes. And <laughs> mentors and mentees for sticking it out during yeah. this tough year. It means a lot and I'm really proud of everyone. It's been a tough one, but if you look at the artwork around, you wouldn't be able able to tell um, and I think that is a testament to who we are as a people and what art has the power um, to do so if you are interested in becoming an art uh, core mentor um, where can they find more information about that yeah so if you head to our website redlineart.org and you go to programs and then art core mentoring there's a link where you can fill out an interest form to become an artist mentor um, so you get paired one-on-one -on -one with a student and you work together throughout the whole school year which is really special incredible and if you're interested in becoming a epic teacher school partner and or artist please visit our website and go through the community resource page and then find Epic Arts, sign up, and then get in contact with us so that we can continue to grow our community. We want to say thank you to everyone that's here in person right now, reclaiming our space and our empowerment. Thank you. Thank you. Be well.